Hey guys, welcome back to Red Free Moto. This is Jonathan. Today we are riding the Triumph Bonneville T120 that I'm renting through Ridershare, which this is not a promotional video for Ridershare. I've never used Ridershare before, but I am on vacation in the Outer Banks, North Carolina, and found this baby for rent for less than $100 a day, which to me is worth it because I didn't want to trailer my motorcycle down here. In the background, we have my wife and kids lovingly waiting for me to hurry the heck up. So let's hit it. Let's get to it. All right. Still learning how to ride this thing. She's got a, a few quirks. According to my wife, none of the turn signals are working properly, so that's always comforting. Might help if I... Oh, what happened? Oh, side stand was down. So it's got a side stand sensor. Say that five times fast. Everybody. So don't ride off with the side stand down. You might regret it. My family is so kind to be willing to come with me to pick this bike up and then my wife is driving the truck all the way back. It's an hour and 15 minutes from where we picked the bike up in Kitty Hawk to where we're staying in Avon. Man, I feel the wind now. But so we came up here, rode the hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, whatever it was with traffic. We got something to eat at a place called the Rundown Cafe in Kitty Hawk. That was pretty good. Uh, recommend it if you're uh, looking for a place to eat in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. It is a six speed. All right. Man, there's a lot of wind. I hope, uh, hope, hope this doesn't kill the audio bad. But, uh, so... south on Route 12. We're heading towards Avon. And there's some boring parts. Like this isn't terribly exciting, but there's some really cool parts too. Where we're going to get to go over some bridges that are way high above the water. A lot of this area is National Seashore. Cape Hatteras National Seashore. And... A lot of uh, this is some bird. Pea Island uh, is actually a bird sanctuary. Um, not like pea, like um, you're thinking of, but pea, like P E A. <laughs> pea Island. But see, there's birds everywhere, and uh, so it's really cool. I almost wish, like, that I had brought my motorcycle jacket. I thought it'd be too hot. I know you should always wear dress for the slide, not for the ride. I know. But when it gets hot, I'm such a wuss. And I'll wear proper boots and gloves but and, and a proper helmet. But you won't always catch me with a good jacket on on a hot day. But with this wind is a Nyack's Head water tower. With this wind, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of wish I had my coat. Alright, toughen up there, young man. Uh, today, I am trying out for my first time my Indy Ridge uh, ventilated motorcycle boots, which I can already tell they are so much cooler 
These are the walkers from the Wingman collection. I don't know if you can see it on the boot on the camera there. There's an army of UPS trucks or a convoy of UPS trucks. My gosh, I'm riding right into the wind. I feel like, uh, but I'm also rocking these Indy Ridge gloves. They're leather uh, in denim, and I, I I'm telling you, I think these are my new favorite gloves. I've had a lot of gloves over the past 22 years of riding, um, from Olympia gel gloves to, which you know, they have the padding in the palms, which doesn't do anything it seems like, um, to Harley Davidson gloves, to Indian motorcycle gloves, to uh, Icon, you name it, I've had lots of different gloves. But these, and I've got a, one uh, one pair of gloves for cold weather. They're really thick and they work really well. But you can't feel the throttle and you can't feel the uh, anything. It's really like it's kind of dangerous. I don't like riding with with really thick gloves for cold weather. I'd rather have a good pair of heated grips and some decent uh, protection. Like these are these these. I feel like because of their denim. They have a lot more, they have denim on the uh, top of the, the hand, and then they have the leather on the underside. You got extra padding down there at the bottom of the palm, um, and then we got touch screen on the, the pointer finger and the thumb. But uh, I feel like the denim uh, allows more air. Like, think about it, if you're wearing leather pants, which I know, I know, like riding pants, I'm not talking about like like you're thinking of but if you're wearing leather riding like chaps okay let's call them chaps if you're wearing chaps you know those things if you wore leather chaps they're great in the winter I've never worn them but I know they're great in the winter because I have friends that have worn them that's yeah that's the story we have got friends that have worn them not me I've never worn assless chaps but uh I'm not going to put a picture up of that. Um, enough about chaps. They they protect you really well from, from getting cold legs in the wind, right? That's the whole idea. And maybe a little protection factor if you crash. But... Like, you don't want to wear those... Sorry, I'm like, boo. Uh, you don't want to wear those in the, in the summertime. You'll sweat to death. So, I'd rather wear a nice pair of jeans, you know, that hopefully have some protection factor, but probably not much. But th these denim inlaid with the leather, it's like, and then you've got armor on the knuckles too. What a cool glove. I mean, look at it. It's so cool looking. It's definitely my new favorite glove. Indy Ridge, you knocked it out of the park. And uh, I paid, I paid uh, for a pair of boots and they were having a Father's Day sale like Father's Day treat to myself or something and I, uh, I got a free pair of gloves so that's an $85 value these gloves cost $85 or at least last time I checked the website they were $85 so that's pretty amazing sale to be able to get a pair of boots and get a pair of $85 gloves for free see all the birds flying around it's crazy This thing is really easy to speed on. I'm noticing that right away. I'm telling you, this thing is a blast to ride. Bonneville T120. I'm gonna have to see if there's any of these things on Facebook Marketplace when I when I get home. <laughs> it's just fun, you know. You just want to get out and ride. The Fat Boy's fun too, but. Now, uh, one thing I will say is this thing does not have much of a running light, so I'm super paranoid that I gotta figure out how to turn on the uh, the high beam like all the time. I have not figured that out yet. I also don't know. This might fit my phone. Let's 
see how, this is awesome. This is what I'm talking about. This was worth the wait. Like these bridges that take you, look at all that bridge in front of us going up and over the water. It's a peg motorcycle so I can stand up on my pegs. Can't really do that too well on floorboards. So, to my right we have the sound, and to my left is the ocean. That's one of the cool things about the Outer Banks. And I think it's why a lot of families like coming down here vacation you got people that, that will come down here from as far north as Maryland and uh, you'll you got people from south of here too but mostly north and west I've seen West Virginia plates Virginia that's where, where we're from this I feel like if I go over this next hill crest on the other side is like the surface of the moon. Of course the moon's up there so probably not, but just awesome. Just awesome. time if you come down here in the off season this bridge is covered with dead birds so I think it's because they don't the workers aren't quite as uh, active in the off season and so the dead birds kind of stay stay around they get hit by cars it's kind of sad all right this is uh, P Island here and this is the P Island Life Saving Station where they would go out and rescue shipwrecks. This place is famous for all the shipwrecks. They call it the Outer Banks the Graveyard of the Atlantic. The reason they, they call it that is there are more shipwrecks. Oh, look at that. Wow. That is... Look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow. So anyway, sorry there was a helicopter. <laughs> That's a good reason to get distracted. Uh, there's this area is so many shipwrecks, like back to the well, back to the 1500s, really. There's so many shipwrecks in this area, so many thousands of shipwrecks that there's actually a museum all the way down at the end of Route 12 here, um, where you can get on the ferry to go to Ocracoke the Hatteras Ferry. Um, it's, the museum is called the Graveyard of the Atlantic Museum. And we've, it actually just reopened this year in May. We've been waiting for it to open for the past like four years. It uh, needed some updating and some repairs and they closed it to renovate for several years while they rebuilt with a four and a half million dollar grant that they were given. And now it's free. It's a free museum. I think the suggested donation is five dollars, and they have a great gift gift shop. And it is just a fantastic museum. 
Um, I actually was there for probably an hour and a half the other day. And you know how kids get with, um, you know, being in museums where they maybe don't appreciate it because they, they get bored, which I can understand. That's one thing. It would be nice if they had little, some more kid-friendly things to do. They did have a scavenger hunt. Um, that the kids got to do and they got like a sticker or something for doing the scavenger hunt and they had a fun time they had a really great like I said a really great gift shop but um, after like an hour and a half in there I still hadn't seen anywhere close to all the stuff they have in there to look at and so I'm gonna be going back before we go home look at this it's just amazing Fifth gear, we should upshift. This thing really, I feel like it is built for speed, you know, like I'm cruising around, I don't know if this is accurate, but I'm cruising around 60 and it just feels like it could go 100 and something very easily. I'm not going to do that. I value my life too much, but it, it's smooth. Like, very little vibration. It's got great suspension travel. Slow down a little bit. So this is the Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge. This whole this whole island has zero houses on it. Pea Island. It is literally for the birds. And it's really cool that we can kind of pass through it. You know, up until today, I was going to have a, a little pre-buyer's remorse paying um, almost $100 a day for this motorcycle. But that's all gone now. I am having a blast. I am having so much fun on this motorcycle. I've never ridden a motorcycle in the Outer Banks before. And it is just incredible. Just incredible. I have this feeling of exhilaration. Let's look how beautiful that is. This area very famous for um, its seashore is used for not only the bird life right the, but also turtles lay their eggs here on these dunes and so you'll look and see a lot of these dunes uh, some of them will have signs that say keep off the dunes and no entry they'll actually if they find turtle where, places where turtles are nesting they'll put fence around it to protect those turtle eggs and they also see over here to your left all those signs turtle nests turtle nesting area so you're not allowed to walk there heavy heavy fines possibly even some sort of jail time I don't know but you don't want to do you don't want to mess with that. This whole area gets uh, battered and beaten so much by the wind and hurricanes. You see over there you've got like, I don't know what that used to be, a pier or a bridge. There's nothing left but the foundation now. It's 
just magical down here, especially in the evening time. The the mirrors on this bike are great. Like I don't see my arm or my shoulder at all. They stick out far enough that you can actually see the road. like these telephone poles just go for miles and miles. Yeah, I gotta figure out this high beam here. I gotta adjust this uh, clutch out a little bit too. It's like, it's on number four. I wonder kind of close into the handle. And the brake is actually the opposite. The brake's too far away. So I might play with that later too. But I really am trying to find out where the high beams are. The, the headlights for this thing. There's a flash to pass. Usually you got a, a flipper switch for your your headlight. I don't see it. I also don't know what that does. M. Maybe that's a horn. Nope. Don't know what that does. Oh well. Back to need to pay attention to my ride. Alright, so we're leaving P Island. Back over the water. Another awesome bridge. This bridge did not used to be here. They recently built it in the past like year or two, I would say. They completed it. You used to continue down this narrow strip over here. You can see there's some houses and stuff down there. But the ocean was getting so close to overtaking the road that the water would be across the road and they'd be constantly having to like build new little uh, sand um, dunes, I don't know what you call it, little barriers made of sand uh, to kind of fight back the ocean from taking over the road. It was getting kind of dangerous where there would be so much sand in the road it wasn't really safe to drive through. There was so much water in the road that there were huge areas of standing water. So they built this, uh, this bridge to go around that area. the headlines now. YouTuber stands up on his motorcycle that he rented from rider share on a bridge and pitches into the ocean never to be seen again. I'll be careful. But yeah, so now we're kind of going around this area, and if you want to go back to the houses, uh, you can take a, there's a roundabout or a rotary or traffic circle or 
whatever you want to call it. Hey, look, kids, Big Ben. I call it a, I like rotary, but I think mostly where I'm from, they call it traffic circle. But if you want it to go that way, then you just go around the traffic circle and uh, go to the left. So you can still go up that road uh, to a point. No brakes at all. This thing's got some good engine braking. And watch his sand all over the place here. So this is Rodanthe. Maybe it's Chica Comico. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Because the water tower says Chica. Ch yeah, that. Chica. Chica. Ma, Chicama Comico. <laughs> I'm going to have to. I am, I'm sorry. I'm probably really pronouncing it incorrectly. This is all Dare County. I wonder what it would be like to uh, work as a deputy sheriff for Dare County Sheriff's Office. There's a one wheel. Seen a lot of those down here. I think that's the third one I've seen since I got here a couple days ago. Yeah, see, see it says Rodanthe, so. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's both. See, it's just kind of like a little lower speed down here than uh, the Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills area. I don't know what that used to be. Maybe a uh, some sort of uh, amusement park. <laughs> Don't want to jump off that anymore. Good lord! But uh, we prefer it down here just because it's a little lower speed. Um, there's not as much to do down here, but there's to me there's plenty to do. I'm on a motorcycle I really don't care but obviously I can't do that every day uh, because I have a family here with me and until they all get their own motorcycles we can't go on big group rides as a family I'm sure my wife would have something to say about my uh, three-year-old riding um, I would never do that anyway oh these oh, gosh I think they were waiting to pet to across the street now I feel bad uh, I would have stopped, but I didn't see him till it was kind of late. But uh, a lot of places down here to uh, rent bicycles and things like that. A lot of families, as you can see. kids on bikes it's just beautiful down here too the weather has been wonderful I think it's in the 90s in Virginia this week this past couple of days and uh, it's been in the 80s here. And with the breeze, it's felt amazing.
Got a grip warmers on this bike. Not gonna need those while I'm here. Unless I ride at night. Now, it's possible if I ride some at night. And I honestly feel like, by the way, riding at night, I feel like there's something wrong with the low beam on this bike. Um, because I'll have to show you in another video, but like, there really is no low beam. There's only high beam, and there's like a LED running light on the bottom and that's it and I asked the uh, owner who I rented this from through rider share and he said that there is no low beam like there's just this little LED strip on the on the light and then there's high beam and that's it so I don't know if that's correct uh, I feel like there's a possibility that the low beam filament is out it's a halogen bulb and maybe it just needs to be replaced it's probably a dual filament bulb uh, it probably just needs to be replaced but I don't know I'd have to research that but I don't know of any bike that doesn't have any low beam and you can only ride with your high beam at night for proper illumination artisans down here see a lot of places that sell you know things that you can buy they have a farmers market in Avon every Tuesday I actually went to that this morning and uh, they had everything there from shaved ice to to paintings to um, pottery all sorts of different kinds of art bike is great. I feel like I could ride it all day. It's a very uh, upright seating position. I'm very tempted to just blow the doors off this truck, but I'm going to be good because my wife's behind me and Pretty sure she can find her way back just fine, but she's smart. But I don't want to ditch them if they're behind me.
couple of years ago, I came down here to Avon and I was looking for a motorcycle to rent. And you cannot mo rent a motorcycle down here through like Harley dealerships or anything. They, uh, they stopped doing that. Um, I feel like it would probably be a really lucrative thing, but maybe they were having too many uh, problems. I don't know, maybe it just wasn't worth keeping up with, which I can understand. Uh, but maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, two, two, three years ago, it wouldn't have been two and a half. It was a couple summers ago. Came down here, Avon, North Carolina, on the Outer Banks, and I uh, was looking for something to rent, couldn't find anything, and so I ended up settling, don't laugh at me, on a scooter. Like a Chinese 30 mile an hour top speed uh, scooter. Just because I was so desperate to have something to ride. And I'm not going to lie, it was actually kind of fun for a while. But it got really frustrating topping out at 30 miles an hour. That is a very low top speed. And when you got these long stretches between, like this one, between um, little towns in the Outer Banks, it takes a long time, bro, to get between those at 29 miles an hour, if you're lucky. Um, And I can't remember what it cost to rent that thing for 24 hours or two days or whatever, but it was way too much for what it was. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm paying less for this motorcycle, this real motorcycle, per day than I was paying for that scooter. And, you know, not to mention, like, you're going through these areas and you might, you have to ride, like, in this little shoulder area, if cars are blowing you. I guess they wouldn't be blowing your doors off because they don't have any doors, but they're blowing by you and you feel so vulnerable and uh, it just it's just a sucky feeling, so unless you're in a very small 25 mile an hour 25 to 35 mile an hour area tops I wouldn't recommend it uh, for the Outer Banks. Scooters uh, are just too dangerous uh I did not have, uh, you know, it was fun at first, like I said, but overall, not something I was going to do again. Now, the place I rented it from, I'm pretty sure has gone out of business or they moved their place of business. It was called Baby Daddy, Baby Daddy Buggies and Rentals or something like that. Baby Daddy's Buggies or, it's kind of a funny name, but... They also had like dune buggies that you could rent. They had were built on Volkswagen chassis, old VW bug Volkswagen Beetle chassis, and those were really cool. I thought about like, oh, how much would it be to rent one of those? But it was ungodly expensive. We're talking like I don't know. It was something like. To get the one that you could put your whole family in, it was like between $500 and $600 a day. And I was just flabbergasted with that price. I'm like, nope. I, I, you can go to Hertz and get a convertible Mustang or Jeep for less than that. That's ridiculous. So, needless to say, I did not rent a baby daddy buggy. But I did rent a moped. I need to upshift again. Oh my gosh, I'm running around at 55 miles an hour in fourth gear. I don't think it's hurting the bike at all. Because you don't feel the RPMs in this thing at all. But it's probably not good for my fuel economy. This thing feels so light and nimble. I bet it gets decent economy, fuel economy anyway. I think it's a 1200 cc. I could be wrong. Bonneville T120. Gonna have to get online and do some research on this. All these guys fishing, see the fishing poles. 
that's the cool thing about the Outer Banks too is like um, if you get a permit there's certain areas uh, on the Hatteras National Seashore that you can drive out on the beach and uh, just gonna like lower the air pressure in your tires a little bit so you don't get stuck but if that's your thing you want to drive out on the beach and fish or spend the day on the beach you can spend the day on the beach I have a friend of mine who has a, uh, a truck camper like it, it goes in the bed of his uh, pickup truck he, he'll bring his wife down here and they'll uh, camp in the campground at night and then during the day 6 a.m. they can go out on the beach and fish all day and cook food on a little propane stove inside the camper and it's kind of cool pretty sure that he said that uh, he's paying under $30 a night for his campsite so for, it's pretty inexpensive compared to what I'm paying for a rental house down here I'm waiting for uh, the next little town I believe next town is Avon, but I could be wrong. So much wind. Actually a lot buggier than I thought too. I've got quite a few bugs on my uh, visor. Hoping there's none on the GoPro lens. Back there, the sign says "Little Little Kinnicky U.S. Life Saving Station." I don't know if that one's still operational, but they. Uh, They've had so many shipwrecks down here, it's insane. I was, there was one shipwreck I was reading about that happened in 2004. And usually it's from a lot of the ships that have, have run aground because of the, all the sandbars and shoals and sh what they call shifting shoals in the area. So there's, you know, sandbars um, that ships will run up on and uh, it'll rip a hole in their hull and sink the ship. But there was one wreck, shipwreck in 2004 where it was a fuel tanker and for whatever reason they decided to open the tanks while they were cruising through the area to clean them which is a uh, this is according to what was in the museum, but it's a, a huge no-no, a major safety violation. And when they opened the tanks, all the vapors from the fuel oil that was released into the air uh, were ignited by a, some sort of a spark. And when that happened, it blew up the ship and killed like a ton of people on board. And then in addition to that, hundreds, over 100,000 gallons of fuel oil uh, made its way into the ocean right here in the Outer Banks. And that was in 2004, so 20 years ago. Just crazy.
All right, this is Avon. This is where we're staying. Historically named Kinnikeet. Okay, so Chickacomico and Rodanthe. Maybe Chickacom, whatever it was, was the same name. Avon's got a food lion and a community pool, so it's a good place to stay. That's why we like it. There's a few, few, few things to do here, so it's kind of good for families. here at the Sugar Kingdom because where else what other better place is there to end a video than the Sugar Kingdom and my faithful wife has pulled in by my side so I'm good I'm just uh, I'm just ending the video What's up, guys? That was a weird way to end the video, so I uh, I figured I'd do a quick uh, walk around of the bike. Um, so, yeah, when my wife pulled up next to me in the truck, the way that I record my voice is actually I um, Bluetooth my headset and my helmet to my phone, and I record a voice memo, and that's what gives me good, uh, clear voice audio. Because I don't have a media mod for my GoPro, I've been too cheap to get one, so. And my, I don't have a GoPro 12, which is, I think is what you need. Anyway, bottom line is that I wanted to show you the bike a little bit more and uh, end the video that way. So this is the Triumph. We'll do a quick walk around of this Triumph T120 Bonneville. It's it's a cool bike. Uh, I've never ridden a Bonneville, Bonneville before. Never ridden a Triumph before, period. And this is a 2018, at least that's what the owner tells me. So it is fuel injected. It's had no problem starting up so far. Very agile, very nimble. Just a lot of fun to ride. So far I've been having a blast on it. But this running light, according to the owner, is it like there is no other light at night other than the high beam and he said if you want you can just use the high beam okay so we have this switch here which okay there's your high beam but then that's it and i'm looking at the filament and i can't tell if it's a mono or a dual filament bulb but uh it seems weird that this is all you've got for a low beam because I don't think there's much throw on that at all at night so if you know something about the T the Triumph Bonneville T120 and 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 the lights on this bike drop something in the comments because I'm trying to learn it's making noise I don't know if you can hear it uh, but it's making noise because we got the key on but I really love this. I mean, I just love the the colors and the design of the tank. It's just so different than anything I've ever ridden before. Just so cool. And 
put it in neutral. It finds neutral real easily. There's more I, I can say from my fat boy. Let's go ahead and start her up. Will it let me? Will it let me start it? It's on. Maybe you gotta pull the clutch in. Stand by. Yep, that's the secret. I could barely hear that guy going down the road <laughs> but uh it does sound pretty good and i bet if you woke it up with some sort of aftermarket exhaust it'd sound even better but uh yeah if you want to see some more videos with this bike make sure you so you're subscribed to rev free moto we'll be doing some more videos around the outer banks uh coming up soon so god bless hope you have a great day and we'll see you in the next video remember it's who you're becoming that matters most god bless